Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Today I want to talk about call it blocks and introduce you to them. A lot of you already know what they are, but a lot of you don't. So what is a call it block? A call it block is a hardened piece of ground steel that holds a collet. And we're going to talk about 5C collets today because they're the most common collet out there next to what goes into a bridge port, which is an R8 collet. And as you can see next to me, here's a whole variety of collets. Collets come in all sorts of sizes and designs, more than I can even imagine. And this is just a, a quick little sample of them. So let's get back to 5C collets. This one here is a half inch 5C collet. And what it's designed to do is go inside something and be drawn in it and clamped down on an item. And just like this, we're going to slide into this collet block, which the collet block you can see is ground in here with an angle that matches this angle. And you can see how when this collet gets drawn into the block, it clamps down on this side. Very cool. And it's, it's really set up more for manufacturing where you need to switch out and put in new parts quickly and also very accurately, more accurately than what a three-jaw chuck can normally do. But also when collets can be as large as this, this is also a 5C collet with a large face on it that you could put in a large object to clamp down on it. But they're not just designed to clamp down on material. You can have a collet like this that clamps inside and expands and holds it. With a collet block, there's basically two designs. You have a square and you have a hexagonal, which at the first start you go, well, why is that? Well, think about nuts and bolts. If you need to make a square head or a square nut, you would use a collet block. Also, hexagonal. If you wanted to do that, you can set that up and you do it over on the milling machine where I'll show you a little bit later how to set up and cut a hexagonal shape quick and easy without a lot of complication. We're going to simplify it like I try to do on all my videos is there's a lot of ways to do things. And I try to find the simplest, fastest way of doing something that is easy to teach and easy to retain. So let's go back to the collet block. Before you use any tools, what you want to do is you want to test their accuracy. And being a Chinese tool like this, and we buy a lot of Chinese tools, I would love to buy American, but I'll be honest, I can't afford it all the time. So sometimes we just have to go to a cheaper resource, like something here. This one was actually made in Taiwan, and it has a date on it, 00. So this was actually probably made really, really well. We're going to put a retaining ring on the back, or a um, draw ring. And what this ring does when it tightens up, it also pulls in the collet. Here's another way of doing it. This is a system that screws onto the back. And when it's to a certain point, you can lock it in quickly and disengage it quickly so you can put your parts in and out. Now let's test this collet block. We're going to put a half inch bar in here, half inch ground rod. I'm going to test it. But before we do the rod, let's test the outside. Let's find out how accurate it is. Okay, this is an inner rapid test indicator. Each mark on here represents 10 thousandths of an inch. So what that means, any dust speck that's on this ground table, well, is going to throw off my measurement. So let's bring this in here. I'm going to put an X so we remember where we start. And we're going to check to see if this is parallel. That's pretty nice. Let's check the other side. Parallel. Nice. Hmm. 
Wow, that is a well-ground tool. I, whoever set up that machine for that day really nailed it. We are within a ten thousandths of an inch, which what that means, this tool or this call-up block is going to go into my grinding room and permanently stay in the grinding room. It will never touch this milling machine after today. That is just too nice to have clamped into a um, milling machine. Also, something else you realize that when I came under this probe, I came from my right to the left. And the reason I did that is it allows that probe to just kind of ride up, where if I come into this way, that probe could jam and tip down and throw off the measurement. Very nice. Okay, now this is where the rubber meets the road, is how accurately is this pin being held inside the collet. So we're going to want to check to see if the pin's held parallel, and also is it held concentrically to this collet block. So we're going to come back in here. Seems to be parallel on that one. Okay, we're a half a thousandths out. But still seven thousandths out, but still parallel. Seven ten thousandths. Two, th two ten thousandths. Two tenths. Two tenths. Back to zero. One ten. Wow. <laughs> that is very impressive. If you'll permit me to round this off, a plus or minus half a thousandths. That is an amazing accurate collet block because you have to look at a collet block as how many surfaces are in here. So we have the outside ground surface that if it's touching something it could throw it off. We have the interior ground surface where if it has a speck on it it could throw the collet off. Then we have the surface of the collet that mates inside the collet block. If that has something we have our material and the surface that the material touches on. So there's a lot of places, a lot of surfaces that could throw this collet block off. And to be within a half a thousandths, plus or minus half a thousandths, that is a very, very accurate collet block. So again, this one is going to go permanently into the grinding room and never see the outside, or I should say, this part of the shop again. But for today's arguments, we're going to take it over to the mill, and I'm going to show you how to set up to do a hexagonal cut like this. And it only takes a matter of minutes to set this up, and that's what's great about a collet block is they're not complicated to use. We just simply clamp it in the vise and go to work. So let me take you over to the milling machine and show you how we do it. I've taken the liberty to install the stock into the collet block already just to save time. Now things you want to look for is you can set this in the vise two different ways basically. You've got the corner you can set on or you can set it on the flat. I'm going to set on the flat because I don't know if these corners are actually parallel to each other. I didn't test that and I'll do that a little bit later. The next thing you want to watch out for is cleanliness. Everything has to be perfectly clean or it's going to throw you off. Another thing is you'll see that I've got the front of the collet block basically lined up to the edge of the vise right there. I'm going to make my first cut. We're going to come in oh, about the width of the ranch a little bit more. flip it over. We're going to turn it 180 degrees, get it on the flat, line it up. We're not going to touch anything else. We're going to make a cut.
Now, this is where digital is great. This is what I love about digital. What we're going to do here is we're going to set this to zero. We know we want three quarters of an inch because that's the size of our ranch. We're going to bring this out to 0 0.750. hit zero. Actually, let's show you metric first. Metric is 19.05 meters, or millimeters, excuse me. Zero. So now, this is what the fun is. We're going to take this back out. We're going to measure it. 0 0.430, and we're going to divide that by two which is 7.2, 0 0.72. Put the, call it, put the material back in. We're going to come up, let's go 0 0.72. So 70,000, 71, take the handle out. The handle will vibrate and, well, change the setting there. All right, let's make our next cut. Now, I'm going to be a gambling man here, and I'm going to just rotate this. Technically, what I should do is do the other side and measure it. But what fun is in that? Well, one of these surfaces is not like the other, is it? Okay. Well, I'm going to cut this off. I'll be back in a second. We'll reset it up. Take two. Let's see if I can cut this correctly this time. We'll make sure it's on the flat. Now, just for the record, I did that on purpose. I had a viewer say he would like to see some of my mistakes, and I don't normally show the mistakes because of time, but, well, this goes out to, oh, I can't remember his name. I'll see if I can't put it in the credits later. All right, guys, let's cut this. That easy. Let's see how the wrench fits. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, I also fed some trolls on that. So leave in the comments if you see what a troll is going to complain about on that last uh, cut there, or cuts, I should say. So let's check how accurate this is. Minus one, minus one, minus two, one. So, you know, we're plus or minus a thousandths of an inch, which is, well, for a nut, that's really, really great. So here we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also leave your great comments, your supportive comments. And please understand when I say supportive, you can leave comments that say how you'd like to see the channel done better. Just do it in a positive way. All right, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.